Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, and thanks for taking the time to join us today on the topic and conversation, uh, a manufacturer's guide to CRM. Now, a bit of logistics before we get started. We've allotted one hour for the webinar today, and we've reserved uh, 15 minutes at the tail end of, of the webinar for questions and answers. So feel free to drop your questions throughout the course of the webinar, throughout the course of the presentation. Uh, we'll try to get to all the questions in our Q&A, but any that we don't get to, um, we'll absolutely follow up with you directly uh, offline. Um, throughout the webinar, there's going to be a couple of polls. We're going to we're going to send a couple of questions your way. Um, we'll take a few minutes, uh, a few seconds rather, to to get those questions answered, and we'll share the results with you on those questions. So expect um, sort of interstitial questions, poll questions throughout the course of the webinar. Uh, and finally, this uh, webinar will be recorded. And we'll be following up with you in a couple of days with the with the webinar. So for anyone who wasn't able to attend the live broadcast, you can absolutely share that along uh, to any of your colleagues or anyone that might be interested in checking it out. My name is Samer Baruti, Director of Product Marketing, and joining us today is none other than Sugar CRM co-founder and Chief Strategy Officer Clint Oram. Welcome, Clint. Thank you, Samer. Glad to be here. Also joining us uh, to share a really compelling story and use case is Ross Pitum from Sugar Serum Elite Partner in Telestream. Welcome, Ross. Thank you very much. Glad to be a part of today's webinar. Happy to have you. Now, uh, for the agenda today, uh, Clint will share with you some of the, the trends uh, that you may or may not be thinking about, but are nonetheless having a massive impact uh, on, on the manufacturing industry as a whole. We'll be discussing sugar for manufacturers, and then we'll pass it over to Ross to share how sugar has uh, helped product manufacturer, supplier, Aeromotive, uh, streamline their operations and really up-level how they do business with their customers. And then we'll move on to Q&A and continue on with our day. Uh, again, appreciate you all taking the time. And with that, I'm going to pass it over to Quintor. Thank you very much, Sam. I appreciate it. And thank you all, uh, everybody, for taking the precious time out of your day to spend some time with us and learn more about how CRM can help your business grow. There's a lot of exciting things happening across the manufacturing industry today. It's certainly a, a time when the world is changing. There's a lot of buzzwords out there from industry 4.0 to IoT to servitization to digital transformation. And I'm sure many of you are already taking advantage of these new trends in the marketplace to accelerate your business. And some of you are also thinking, how exactly would this apply to my business? And frankly, I'm sure there's also some of you that just really haven't had the chance to lift yourself out of your day-to-day -day challenges and look at the horizon ahead of you and see what's coming. So the goal of today's presentation is to is to share with you these industry trends so that you can have a better grounding in what they are and what they can mean to your business and how to take advantage of them, and then look specifically at how a customer relationship management solution like Sugar CRM can really help you accelerate your business. So the very first trend that we'd like to talk about here is one that has that become certainly a hot topic over the last couple of years, first introduced as a concept about 10 years ago, Industry 4.0. What is Industry 4.0 mean? Well, quite simply, it's the fourth industrial revolution. Uh, dating back to the first industrial revolution, uh, when, when we were all kids, no, wait, a little further back than that, uh, way back in the 1700s, when water and steam power started transforming the way manufacturing was, was uh, executed, the second industrial revolution, when electricity and mass production uh, dramatically changed things again, and then Oh yeah, back when we were kids, the third industrial revolution, specifically the time frame in roughly the 70s and 80s, uh, the last century, when electronics and IT further automated the manufacturing process. What's different today? What's the fourth industrial revolution? What started in this past decade? Quite simply put, it's not how you make things go faster with technology, but how you rethink your entire manufacturing process and your customer engagement process 
leveraging technology in new and exciting ways, not better mousetraps, but entirely new ways of running your business. And as you think about that, uh, one of the key ideas that I want to leave you with today is the idea of servitization and how servitization, the process of making your business not just a manufacturer of goods and products, but a business that also delivers services wrapped around those products and, and uh, products and goods, allowing you to ultimately build a recurring revenue business model. Let's dig into that a little bit more. As I talked about just a moment ago, servitization is the, is the culmination of you delivering both products and services to your customers. You may already be doing that today in the form of maintenance services or implementation services, but we like to explore the concept a little bit further. And, and what does it ultimately deliver to you? Well, first, this is how companies are differentiating themselves in today's world. This is one of the key ways that they're rethinking their business model uh, to not only deliver a better experience to their customers, both from a quality of engagement as well as a quality of a product that's delivered to the customers, but it also allows you to rethink your revenue model, it allows you to diversify your revenue model and bring a more predictable, ongoing, recurring revenue model into your business. Some really interesting and exciting ideas if you're a business leader thinking about uh, your P&L for the business, thinking about how you differentiate in the marketplace, thinking about how you grow your business. Now, there's some outstanding companies out there that are already embracing the idea of servitization today. Uh, sugar customers like Vendorlandi and Caterpillar and Apple and Audi, as they think about uh, how they're leveraging uh, new products and services, as you can see here, bringing entirely new ways of engaging with a customer through their products. You know, one of my favorite descriptions, of course, is Apple right now, who's uh, in the news. If you've been paying attention to Apple in the news as they launch their new media streaming services, you have to ask yourself a question. Does Apple value themselves as a manufacturer of devices? Or does Apple value themselves based upon the services they deliver on top of those devices? Well, I can tell you for a fact that Apple has been actively messaging to the marketplace, actively messaging to Wall Street, that they want the future of the company to be valued around the services that they deliver on top of the products that they build today. And as you think about these ideas, there's a whole realm of other examples that in a, a, across a variety of manufacturing industries that might serve as an inspiration to you on how you can think about your next generation of products and services. But in there, I'd also like to pause for a moment and, and put the reality check against this, in that it's not just rethinking how you add an app to your existing products. Maybe it's as simple as delivering implementation services for your products, maintenance contracts, maintenance and service contracts for your products. There's a variety of ways of thinking about that ongoing recurring revenue stream that maybe you're already taking advantage of today, but it's only an ancillary part of your business, and now is the time to think about how you make it a focus of your business going into the future. So with that, as we introduce this idea of servitization, we'd like to pause for a moment and introduce the first poll question to you as an audience. Does your organization currently offer value-added services in addition to your products? You'll see in your, uh, in your screen here that we've just popped up this quick poll. Three simple answers. Please go ahead and click on one and click Submit, and we'll share with you the results as we work our way through the rest of today's dialogue. All right, thank you very much. We'll take it back now to the, uh, to the presentation. And we'll go ahead and close the poll there, and we'll move forward. Oh, we're already getting the results of the poll. 65% of you are already offering services in addition to your product offerings today. 65% of you are not just a manufacturer of products, but you're a deliverer of services as well. That's pretty fascinating. 
And, and then there's a group of you who are thinking about it and a group of you who are just focusing on products only today. So I might suggest that uh, the group of you that are, uh, that are thinking about it and the group that are only focused on products, uh, this might be an opportunity to rethink your business and how you can uh, take advantage of a new revenue stream for your business. So how, are, how would you go about doing that? What's the way to approach that? Well, I'm a book nerd myself. I love to read books. It's, uh, uh, it's one of the ways that uh, um, I decompress at the end of every day. So here's Made to Serve, a fantastic book by Tim Baines and Howard Lightfoot. Uh, it, it describes all of the different ways that your peers today are adding services into their manufacturing products and delivery. Uh, go do some searching on the internet and you'll find uh, some outstanding blog articles that give you an analysis of made to serve. Maybe you're not somebody who likes to sit down with a book uh, and, uh, and enjoy it in the evening. Maybe you just want the quick analysis, but this is the book for you to go learn and more about this topic and how you can apply it to your business. Now, let's take this idea a step further. We're talking about new ways for you to bring uh, revenue streams into your business, rethink the way that you compete out in the marketplace, rethink the way that you build a, uh, a cash flow model, a business model within your business. But let's, let's pop it up a level and talk about this topic at a macro level. We call this digital business transformation. Now, okay, this is a bit of a, a buzzword bingo here, I admit. Uh, um, I have said digital business and transformation, and so uh, I'm going to have to put a, a dollar in the buzzword jar here in the office. But let's dig into it a little bit and talk more about what this means. This is about how you transform your business, leveraging technology in terms of not only how you, how you build and deliver the products and services that you sell in the marketplace, but also around how you engage with your customers. And, and in there, what I think is a key idea that we're at the front end of this journey. You're not at a point where you're completely missing out if you're starting now. Your, your, your peers out there may have already started on the journey, but nobody has fully embraced this in a way that they can say their entire business has been transformed lever leveraging digital technology. And we'll talk more about what, what how IoT can transform the way that you uh, monitor and engage with your products, uh, how customer experience technology can change the way that you engage with your customers around those products. But look here at this chart from Gartner. You're not alone if you're at the front end of that journey. And, and what does that journey look like for you? Well, I'd like to reference this graphic from our friends at Deloitte. Deloitte has described what a modern digital manufacturing enterprise looks like. And they've described it across four different dimensions. The customer experience, the frequency with which you interact with your customers, how you interact with those, those customers, what's the context of the interactions, and ultimately what's the value that you're delivering to your customers. And what I want you to really walk away with today is a keen understanding that as a manufacturer, you cannot be myopically focused on just building the best product in the marketplace. The world is flat, competition is coming from everywhere. Every one of your competitors is one Google search away. Every one of your competitors is trying to take your customers away from you. Relying solely on high quality products doesn't cut it anymore in today's marketplace. You need to be thinking about how you become a company that has a proactive customer experience, where you're thinking through how you align the delivery of your products, the support of your products, the continuous selling of your products into an experience where your salespeople are trusted experts. Your customer service people are trusted experts. And they are continuously engaging with your customers, not just a one-time uh, drop it off uh, type scenario of here's your product and good luck and have a great day. But you're actually customizing those interactions as well to make them very unique to the individuals that you're working with. 
And in the end, you're leveraging the data that you're collecting about your customers and the usage of your product and the frequency of delivery of your product in order to establish a clear set of services that make you different in the market. I hope this is all uh, a set of ideas that, that either you're already thinking about or you're already trying to uh, figure out how to embrace because what I really want to leave you with is the idea that the customer experience integrated tightly with the quality of the product is what's going to make you win in today's world. Now, let's bring it home. Let's talk about Sugar CRM. And what are we doing here at Sugar CRM? You know, when I started the company 15 years ago, my vision was to build a killer app that is accessible to companies of all sizes that help sellers sell and customer service agents deliver extraordinary customer service. As simple as that. And what I saw with legacy CRM solutions out there is that they were primarily designed to help managers manage, right? They're designed mostly to help a manager manage their salespeople and their customer service people. And the apps weren't designed to actually help the seller sell and the customer service agent deliver that extraordinary customer service. And so what we do here at Sugar CRM is we've built a set of tools that turn your customer relationship professionals into customer experts. We give them the set of tools that are easy to use, that allow you to quickly get to the answers that you need to, uh, to solve those customers' questions and problems, that not only give you the answers when you're asking for them, but give you the answers before you even ask the question with key insights into your customers and, and how you're engaging with them. And with that, we're doing that with a set of tools that are always available any point in time through your mobile device, through your laptop, we're investing heavily into the future of voice technology and, and everything that comes around tools like Siri and Alexa. And we've also invested heavily in a business process automation tool set that allows you to map out the best processes within your company for servicing your customers' questions, whether that's before the sale, after the sale, the next sale that's coming up whether it's answering questions from a customer service perspective, whether it's answering questions around trying to understand your products along the way. And here's the key part in there, knowing who your customer is. And we deliver that with a set of tools that allow us to inject customer data, not just that you store within your own systems, but data about your customers from the internet. Where did your customer work last? Do they have a new job? Uh, or do you have the right address for your it's a simple question, do you have the right address for your customers' uh, um, shipping and billing? All this, uh, these answers coming from our Hint Intelligent Data Enrichment Services and being able to plug in this data into your day-to-day -day tools, uh, such as your email tools, whether that's a Gmail or Outlook. And along the way, making it very simple for you to embed the Sugar application into all of your other systems within your business through a set of very simple REST-based API services to tie together different applications with very simple click and configure flexibility to allow you to track the data that you need in order to deliver that exceptional service. I hope that that appeals to you because, well, we're gonna spend the next several minutes talking more about exactly what that looks like with one of our customers. And, and as we get ready to talk about our customers here, I'd like to point out uh, a, a world of manufacturers that are using Sugar Serum today. This is just a subset of our customers. In fact, our single largest group of customers in the marketplace today is, is uh, our manufacturers. And we encourage you to learn more about us if you see uh, um, names on there that resonate with you. In fact, we've got another question for you. The next poll question is, does your organization have a CRM in place today? Very simple question. We'll be pushing that quick poll out now. Everybody's clicking submit. And in a few seconds here, we'll see, we'll see a little bit more about this audience. Let's see what you guys are uh, doing for your CRM solutions today. Everybody's clicking submit. And we'll get the results here in a moment. 
And as we get prepared to do that, it'll be my pleasure to hand over the rest of today's discussion to, uh, well, let's, before we do that, uh, okay, we've got a lot of people using Sugar today, outstanding. Uh, and we've got other people who are using other CRM solutions. Uh, well, trust me, we'll want to talk to you about that, no doubt. Uh, but we've got some exciting things coming in the pipe, in the roadmap ahead of us, the pipeline ahead of us, as we uh, um, get set to make a whole set of announcements around the future of Sugar CRM. In fact, our next major release is coming up in a few weeks. It's the spring 2019 release, the Sugar 9 release. I encourage you to go to support.sugarcrm.com if you're already a Sugar customer to learn more about this exciting new release coming out in front of us. But with this, it's my pleasure to, to turn over the rest of today to, uh, to a man I've known for years, a good friend of mine, uh, uh, somebody who's a true CRM expert. This is Ross Patum, the man of international mystery, who will explain to you how you can get full value out of your CRM investment. Ross, over to you. Thank you very much, Clint. So some really important messages uh, covered in the opening part of today's webinar. Things that are important for any business, um, any company doing business today, but for me particularly so for companies in the manufacturing space where buyer decisions are heavily influenced by price, it's so much more important then, as Clint was pointing out, to be able to differentiate yourself from the competition by not just providing a high quality product but also delivering on a really high quality customer experience at the same time. So I wanted to give you, give you guys some practical um, examples today of things that you can ask yourself to make sure that you're delivering on a high quality experience within your business, but also walk you through a use case of a company that's been using Sugar for just over a year. And we can talk about how they were able to drive efficiencies and improvements for their internal staff, but also improve the experience for their clients at the same time. So I have been delivering CRM systems for many companies across industries for many years, but whenever I work with a manufacturer, um, I've always been impressed by how much drive, energy, brain power, and, and, uh, and motivation goes into refining uh, product design, simplifying the manufacturing process, and driving efficiencies um, within their production. But I haven't always seen that same level of drive and motivation going into driving efficiencies in other parts of their business, in particular in the front end um, of their business in the front office. So I've worked with manufacturers over the years that have really been on the cutting edge of their markets. And I've seen um, in some examples that they're still re relying on outdated sales technologies. Now, even if you do have um, a really neat set of up-to-date sales technologies in place right now, there are still more things that you can be doing and should continue to do on a regular basis, um, questions you can ask yourselves to make sure that you are always delivering on the best experience for your clients um, wherever you're having a touch point with them. So whether that's a client contacting you with an inquiry, uh, an order being placed, delivery on that order and ongoing support, wherever you are engaging with your customer in any, at any time, you should be asking yourself, am I making that the most streamlined process that I can? Right. What am I doing, not just for quality controls in my product, but quality controls in my front office as well, and making sure that any inquiry is followed through correctly? How am I closing feedback loops to let people know that their uh, order is being delivered? When is it going to be delivered? And what am I doing to get a 360-degree view of my customer so that I can talk intelligently to them? Right. One thing is to offer products and services to a customer. It's a whole different thing, offering them products and services that will make a difference to them in their business or day-to-day -day lives. So I wanted to talk about Aeromotive, uh, just to quickly introduce who they are. Um, they are an uh, automobile parts manufacturer. They deal with customers in the collision industry, and they provide electrical component solutions for vehicle repairs. And those are vehicles of every make and model a year across the United States. So we first began working with Aeromotive when Tom reached out to us. Tom is the chief financial officer at Aeromotive. And he had a problem and he reached out to us here at IntelliStream um, to see if we would be able to assist him and his sales team in dealing with some frustrations that they had. So Ray received his email. Ray is one of our business development um, reps here. He gave Tom a call. They had a real good chit chat. And uh, Tom went about articulating some of the challenges that he and uh, the rest of his sales staff had at the time. So he explained to Ray that 
his sales team were taking up to 100 orders a day, but they were still having to go into many different systems, either to process that order or to get information about an existing order that's taking place. Now, Tom already knew that CRM was the solution to this. He had already implemented a CRM solution a couple of years prior to engaging with us, but it wasn't doing the things that he was hoping it would deliver on. Right? He found that even after he and his team were keying in an order, they were still finding themselves going back to their email, looking at images of defected parts that needed to be replaced for their customers, checking those against a image catalog that they stored within Google Drive to make sure that they're providing the correct replacement part first time, every time. And even after that, they had other inefficiencies where if the order was actually being placed, it needed to then be keyed into their ERP system and Aeromotive used QuickBooks. So again, um, his sales reps having to go to multiple spots. Now, Tom knew that there was a better way of doing this. Um, Ray, after listening to Tom's problems, quickly identified Sugar CRM as the best solution for Tom and his team. The main reasons behind that, Sugar CRM provides the framework of tools that Clint outlined before that allow us as a implementer of CRM solutions to quickly build a system that's gonna work for Tom and his team and also be able to integrate a number of those systems that they're having to engage with um, quickly and in a cost-effective way. So Ray put Tom in touch with Cameron, who's one of our customer success managers here. Um, Tom and his team already had some practical ideas of things that they could do to improve their experience. So together with Tom's ideas and some of our own, we got to work on not just dealing with those immediate pain points, but really transforming the way that Tom's business was doing things in the front office. That's going to make the employee experience better for Tom and his team, but also drive a better experience for Aeromotive's clients. So just at a high level, the first thing that we had to do and we achieved in doing was implement Sugar CRM and make this the center of gravity, both for Tom and his management team, but importantly for Tom's sales team. They now had a single place where they could go in and see anything that they needed to see about a given customer and be able to complete an order front to back without having to engage in multiple different systems. We did that by setting up Sugar CRM, first of all, and putting the correct processes in place, but identifying some of the different platforms that they were having to engage with and leveraging custom integrations or marketplace integrations um, for Sugar CRM so that all of that can be, can be combined into a single system. So let me talk about some specific ways where we made a difference, right, rather than these high level examples. Faster order entry, right? So. Tom and his team are able to take orders in through their website, email, or, or across the phone. So just implementing Sugar CRM and having as a baseline a common system for handling all of these, bringing them in um, and storing that customer information and creating a quote record for each uh, for each order was a fundamental a fundamental baseline improvement. But of course, we wanted to go further than that. So Aeromotive's website has a number of different forms available on it. These aren't just simple uh, request forms, but they can include lots of information about a particular vehicle, the year. Um, customers can submit images of defective parts that they need to get replaced as well. And so we were able to leverage Sugar's API in this case to automate the process of a submission on the form to create a quote record inside of Sugar automatically. But that quote record is a very unique quote record for that order. It includes images of the defective parts and everything on a single record inside of Sugar so that when Tom and his team are actually going and servicing that order, they have all of the information they need right away. Similarly, um, orders that would come in through email, we were able to leverage an existing marketplace integration for G Suite to allow Tom and his team to get any email orders into Sugar CRM in the same way to create a quote record with a simple drag and drop of that email. So we're breaking down some of these inefficiencies they had before through having to manually enter in all of that information. We're able to get any order into the system so much quicker. There's less delay in getting those into uh, the standard process and there's less chance of anything being missed. But importantly, we're able to give Tom and his team back all of the time that they were otherwise spending on data entry, time that they can use to build better relationships with their tier one customers and make sure that every order is being done and dealt with in the, in the most appropriate way. Now, on top of that, we're also able to 
do more than just handle faster order entry, we're able to start closing feedback loops. As those orders come in, we can leverage Sugar's internal tools to send out automated replies to the customer, letting them know that their order is being taken care of and who is the name of and the name of the sales rep who's taking care of it, right? So one of the first things on Tom's docket in terms of pain points that they wanted to deal with was quality control. As we mentioned a little earlier, Tom and his team get lots of orders coming every, in every day. And all of these orders, or a lot of these orders have a very unique connector that they need to provide the replacement part for. And these are across all makes and models of cars in the United States across many different years. There are literally thousands of them. So it doesn't matter how well you know your products, um, you never know them as well as you perhaps could, right? So this was always a pain point for them. They need to make sure that when they send out the right uh, the replacement part for a connector, they're sending out the right part first time. And prior to this, they were having to compare images sent from the customer against images in a separate um, Google Drive folder. And we were able to, leveraging Sugar's framework for customizations, build some simple but elegant solutions right there inside of Sugar. And these are some of the two dashlets that we, we provided for them. Now, these two dashlets that you see here, first of all, allow Tom and his team to cycle through images of the defective part that have been sent in from their customer. They can then compare those against images from um, Aeromotive's product catalog housed inside of Sugar CRM of the parts that they're planning on providing on the order as a replacement to make sure with a real visual here that the part that's being sent out is the correct replacement part for that customer. Now that was a big deal for Tom and his team. Um, not just in terms of reducing the error, but the speed with which they were able to process each of these. Right? So you can see how having a solution like this is something that could not just benefit Tom and his team as it's done here, because these two dashlets sit snugly on the order record itself. So anyone looking at that order record can see at a glance, you know, this is the part we're, we're replacing, this is the part we're gonna send out. But there are extended uses of a simple solution like this. You can imagine if you have an incident on your production line, um, there's a faulty piece of machinery, anyone on the shop floor would be able to take images of that on their mobile device, submit a case record through to the workshop through the Sugar mobile application. And now the engineer who's receiving um, the information about that, that fault that they need to go out and fix is not just getting a description, but they're getting a visual of the problem. So they can send the right engineer with the correct replacement parts if necessary, and take all of that with them before they even leave the workshop. So another area that was a pain point um, for Tom's team was with payment processing of credit cards. Um, and here we were again able to implement a solution for Tom and his team quickly and cost efficiently using a marketplace integration that already existed with Authorize.net. So before Tom and his team were using Sugar CRM, um, they were not able to check whether a card was valid until it was invoiced. So they would talk with the customer, they would get that credit card information, thank them for their business, pass that onto the bookkeeper, and then two or three times a day, the bookkeeper would come back and say, guys, bad news, that credit card was declined. You're gonna have to go back and speak with uh, that customer and you know get alternative credit card details. So by implementing this simple solution uh, for Sugar CRM, now Tom's team are able to do an authorized capture or even take a payment inside of Sugar um, when they've got the customer on the phone. Now, that is really important for the customer experience, but also for motivation of Tom's team at the same time. No one wants to phone somebody back and let them know that their card was declined. But importantly, orders are not being delayed anymore while reps are hunting down a customer to get alternative credit card details. Customers are not getting that uncomfortable, unexpected phone call about their order. But on top of that, Tom and his team have seen that now, through this integration, they're also able to manage multiple payment profiles or various credit cards on file for their customers at the same time. So when a customer calls in, they have their credit card information available and they can ask which of the different cards on file they would like to have processed. And all of that information now securely stored within Authorize.net's trusted service. So another really important um, part of the build out for um, Aeromotive's improvements with their customer experience was an integration with their ERP service. 
something that was close to the heart of Tom. Tom's the CFO, remember? So making sure that um, we had tight synergy between his front office sales team and his back office financial team was really important for him. So again, we were able to deliver this for him quickly and cost effectively using a, a existing integration that exists on Sugar Exchange. Now, with this in place, Tom's reps can generate quotes inside of Sugar. They can pass those across to QuickBooks with a couple of clicks and the accounting team can follow through on their process. But importantly, that information about the orders inside of QuickBooks is being passed back to Sugar so that reps can track the progress of those orders. And again, from within a single system, which is Sugar CRM. So there are a number of benefits here, more than I could list on a single slide, but up-to-date uh, product pricing in the catalog inside of Sugar from their ERP system. Tom and his team are now able to get ahead of issues with inventory as they're building out a quote, and we're able to automate a number of um, communications back to the customer. So if you can imagine this in a practical sense, customers are no longer having to call in and see what the process or the status of their order is. We're able to send them automated updates through Sugar CRM to let them know when there has been a status change. So we're not just saving Tom and his team time here by either having to respond to those inbound inquiries or reach out to their customers, that's happening automatically. And the customers are getting um, up-to-date information on their order um, passively without anyone having to spend the time doing that. This is also a massive step forward for Tom and their team in being able to build out a comprehensive 360 degree view of the customer. So I saw on the polls before, a number of you are already using CRM, which is great. But if you've been doing any reading about CRM and how it should be leveraged for creating exceptional experiences for your customers, I'm sure you've read something about the 360 degree view of a customer and why that's important. Um, for those of you who haven't done any reading on that, just to quickly explain, the concept is having a single end-to-end -end picture of a customer's journey and experience with your company and how they felt along those different steps of the journey. Right. Um, now, Aeromotive were able to take some big strides forwards with this by implementing their, C their ERP integrations and G Suite integrations. So sales reps now have access to not just order statuses, but shipment information, payments, past invoices, overdue items, all of those um, important financial or uh, inter interactions that they've had uh, with the company all in a single application and right there on their customer record. But through G Suite and that integration as well, we're also able to supplement that with real communications between humans, right? Um, emails that have been shared back and forth with the customer, meetings that have taken place, even scheduled tasks that were recorded in G Suite can now be integrated and exposed in Sugar. So reps, Tom and his team can speak intelligently not just about orders and recent uh, and recent interactions they've had from a financial standpoint, but also communications they've had with that customer, right? Who have they spoken to? Tom knows if they have a, a rapport with somebody else through all of those different um, activities that he can see recorded on their record. He can see who they've spoken to recently. He can see if they've received the updated pricing sheet for 2019 and when that was sent to them, who received it, right? He can talk much more intelligently to them, um, to his customers. So this is really important for anyone who's engaging with, um, with customers. You can be better prepared. Tom and his team are now better prepared for calls that they're going to uh, make with the customer. They're able to better respond to inbound inquiries as well, not just in the time savers by having that information, but in the way that they respond. This is particularly important in any industry or any market that's facing disruption or there's any chance of your market share being reduced in any way. You need to get closer to your customers. You need to let them know that you know them better than the competition and therefore you're in a better position to service their needs better than the competition. It's a differentiator. So being able to not just offer the products and services, but if you're going to offer a discount, for example, offer a discount on something that that customer shown an interest in in the past, right? Being able to build that rapport and have a 360 view of the customer is really important if you want to differentiate yourself and retain your customers um, that you already have. 
Now, one other area that um, also showed itself as being a real big win for Tom and his team was through industry certifications. And this is a bit of a byproduct of just being better organized through Sugar CRM and having better data entry or easier data entry into their Sugar CRM. So Aeromotive are an ISO certified company, but they're always chasing new standards and certifications within their industry. Now, in order to achieve those certifications, it's tough. I've had to do this myself in companies in the past. There's lots of auditing goes on and you have to prove that you have everything buttoned up. And this has always been a problem and continues to be a problem for any company that needs to get those kind of certifications. But having Sugar CRM in place and being able to show that the quality controls are in place, looking at a given order and seeing everything that's happened about it on a single spot inside of Sugar CRM has really facilitated that process for Tom and his team. They actually shared with us as well that they have shown their CRM to some of their tier one customers in a way of really showing them that they know everything that's going on, especially with larger orders that can go on for weeks and months and really become you know, quite a big thing to handle. They're able to have all of that shown on a single record, all of the different integration uh, interactions, the different paperwork that needed to be signed. And that's something that has actually impressed their own tier one customers and grown the trust knowing that Tom and his team are on top of anything that they need to uh, you know, request from them or provide. So just to wrap this up, um, Tom originally came to us with some pain points he needed to resolve. He is the first to admit he had a great sales team, uh, but he wanted to keep them happy, um, fix their pain points, provide them a solution that was going to deliver on a better employee experience. But in the journey of implementing Sugar CRM over the last year, we haven't just been able to deliver that um, for Tom and his team, but Tom and his team are actually now reaping the benefits of a better customer experience at the same time. We can have faster return times on orders from order through to delivery. We're building out a better 360 view. But on a personal note, as somebody who implements CRM systems for companies and has been doing it for years, I particularly like the way that this was done. Tom and his team came to us with some clear ideas. We were able to leverage our own professional services here within IntelliStream through consulting and knowing the best track to implement this um, and some small but elegant customizations. We were able to implement a system for him quickly and cost effectively, not just using um, some customizations that are easy to implement in Sugar, but also implementing existing marketplace solutions. We were able to deliver this so much quicker and improve the lives of Tom and his team internally in the front office, but improve the customer experience for Aeromotive's clients with a much faster turnaround. So just some quick follow on reading in case you're interested to hear some more from us in Telestream. We have a number of white papers which you can access on our website, uh, Manufacturing and CRM um, and the Modern Manufacturer's Guide to CRMs. If you have not already implemented a integration between CRM and your ERP uh, system, I strongly recommend CRM and ERP integration. It doesn't just explain why that's important for your business, it gives you some really good practical steps for how to implement that within your business. So with that, um, I will hand over for some Q&A questions. Excellent, excellent. Thank you so much, Ross, for that wonderful presentation. And um, uh, definitely encourage you all to take a look at those resources. Really, really exciting stuff and in-depth um, uh, writings on, on these topics. So very, very cool um, readings for you guys. Now, um, as we get into Q&A, we have a number of questions that have come in uh, over the course of the webinar, a handful. Um, and the first one, I think it's for you, Ross, is on ERP integration, um, how did you build the integration? Uh, and is there an ETL in place, if yes, which? Uh, ETL, I think, is extract, uh, transfer, load, or like a... Transform load. Transform load, thank you. Um, like an electronic data interchange, I think, similar to EDI solutions. Huh. Um, if you would, Ross, uh, share a bit about uh, the ERP integration and, and which ETL if you have, if you used ETL, which one? Sure, and this this has to be a little bit of a general question. I'm going to answer it specifically for what we did for Aeromotive first. So we actually had a plug and play integration available on the Sugar Exchange um, for QuickBooks. Now that actually comes pre-packed with a number of really easily configurable options to bring in information into Sugar CRM from QuickBooks and send information back. Um, and that's something that I would recommend if you use QuickBooks because 
you know, you, again, as we saw with Aeromotive, we were able to implement this very quickly um, and, and cost effectively, right? Because the, the work had already been done and we're piggybacking on, on a marketplace um, solution. But even if you don't use QuickBooks yourselves, there are a number of other marketplace solutions for different uh, standard ERP systems that work with Sugar CRM. And even if you don't have a standard or a common CRM, you might have a very old one that perhaps doesn't even have an API. Again, there are a number of good solutions that we can leverage. We have some um, solutions here at IntelliStream as well um, that would actually allow you to integrate with ERP systems that may not even have an API that allows for uh, communication application to application. Um, so, we can also um, manipulate data if necessary. A lot of those solutions out there today and some of the ones that we provide can um, also manipulate data to make sure that it's being digested in the, you know, either the CRM or in your ERP system um, in the way that it needs to be digested. But there are lots of options. It depends on the system you're trying to integrate. Awesome. A related question for you, Ross, is um, what's the most common uh, What's the most common type of CRM integrations manufacturers use today? That's a good question. So any integration that you build um, should be enabling your front office staff, right? Your sales teams, your customer service reps to do a better job, to provide a better experience for your customers. Now, in terms of what is the most common one that we see, especially for manufacturers, I would, I would probably also go with an ERP integration. Um, for a number of reasons. It allows your sales reps to get a more complete picture of your customer, um, as we saw with Aeromotive in terms of shipment information, uh, invoices, and, and all of that financial information. It's also a big win for management as well. They're able to tie in that financial uh, profile of a company with the front, end, front office um, interactions and touch points that your customer service teams and sales reps are having. So it allows you to get a more holistic view of your customers in your business and, and start to get much better insights into uh, high level decisions on your business as well as being able to build out that 360 view of the customer. Um, there are a number of benefits in that ERP integration and typically with uh, within the manufacturing industry, that's the one that we typically see people going for first and the one that we would recommend as well. Great, great. Uh, questions are rolling in, so that's a good uh, good thing. Uh, another one uh, for you, Ross, is um, what's the approximate investment that a company like Aeromotive uh, would make to meet to reach that uh, level of optimization um, with sugar? Relatively low. It's it's difficult for me to put right now a, a dollar figure on this, um, but we were able to leverage tools, and this is what I liked about this solution, right? We were able to leverage plug and play tools. Now, each many of those plug and play tools do have uh, an annual recurring fee involved with them, but if you compare that to you trying to build your own bespoke um, integration between your ERP system or between your uh, email platform and your CRM or any of the other integrations that we saw here today that were plug and play, you would almost certainly find that in the long run, it's going to cost you a lot more money, especially as you're also having to support any changes to those platforms over time as well. Being able to leverage plug and play integrations as we did, you get the uh, support for those integrations as either Sugar CRM changes um, or the integrated system changes as well. So they're things I would always look for in terms of being able to reduce cost when you're building out an integration. But we didn't have to do a whole lot of customization of their system in the end. Um, the tools that Sugar provides and the documentation they provide uh, for us as a partner who implements Sugar CRM, but even if you wanted to do this yourselves, are really good. So the information for um, the API of Sugar is really solid. If you've got a good engineer, you can build out some really decent integrations yourselves. Um, so without putting a dollar amount on it, um, we were able to do it in a, in a much more cost-effective way than you might have done if you were trying to build any of these integrations uh, yourselves. Excellent. Uh, question around uh, integration platforms as a service. Uh, maybe Clint, uh, if you would uh, share a bit about this. The question is, what iPaaS vendors does Sugar support? Or maybe said uh, vice versa. What uh, uh, you know, which which uh, iPaaS vendors a Sugar supporter, or do, which does Sugar support uh, iPaaS uh, mm -hmm. vendors? You bet. 
So integration clearly is a hot topic here. <laughs> we're, we're spending a lot of time talking about it right now. And, and it's uh, it's important because of a few different things. So, so Ross described earlier the value of that 360 degree view of the customer and having the right information at your fingertips at the right time, um, uh, making it easier for your your employees to to find answers for customers. And, and I think it's a really a hot topic in the world of manufacturing because I've never met a manufacturer with just one or two systems, right? They, they've got technology across the board, whether it's warehouse management systems, order management systems, uh, um, quality control systems, you know, how do, how do you feed information throughout the business uh, is, is true, is important for, for every company, but is especially important for manufacturing companies. And so uh, there's a set of technologies out there that um, that help you solve that problem, and and they kind of scale up in sophistication and complexity and cost, right? So uh, at one level, you've got rest, you've got APIs, application programming interfaces between two applications that you can you can connect two applications together through those APIs. Then you have this concept of what's called IPaaS or Integration Platform as a Service, which I'll come back to in a second. Uh, and then you've got even more sophisticated topics like uh, master data management. Okay, so I would here's my experience. If you're a company that's doing less than a hundred million dollars a year in your revenue, you're probably not yet thinking about master data management, you're probably not yet building data warehouses to aggregate data from across the enterprise. You probably haven't really yet slipped into high complexity, right? That's if you're below 100 million. Uh, if you're above $100 million in revenue, you probably are in that complex world. Um, if you're less than $100 million in revenue, you're probably thinking about how do you integrate three, four, five different systems in a real-time manner so that data is getting passed quickly across them, such as uh, uh, invoicing data coming from your, your ERP system into your CRM system. Uh, maybe you're looking at uh, a real-time view into your warehouse to get inventory status. Uh, maybe you're connecting to your your website uh, in order to leverage your website both as a lead collection tool as well as a uh, a status uh, uh, update tool to your customers. So if you're thinking about three, four, five, maybe ten different integrations, you're going beyond the point-to-point -point integration of two different applications and resting and relying on their native uh, APIs. You're now thinking about integration platform as a service, iPaaS. So if you got three to 10 integrations and you're doing less than $100 million in revenue, you probably need an iPaaS. There's a lot of different ones out there, to be quite frank. It's, it's a large market with, with a lot of different solutions. Um, there's companies like Zapier, Boomi, SnapLogic, Bedrock Data. They all have prepackaged integrations to Sugar as well as hundreds of other applications. That's why they're one of the other key benefits of an iPaaS is they have a pre-built connector to uh, uh, lots and lots of different applications. The solution that, that we see deployed the most in manufacturing companies comes from a company called Magic Software. We work very closely with Magic Software. Uh, they're an international company that, that specializes in, in helping solve the problems of manufacturers. We first got introduced to them uh, several years back around a joint customer, Sennheiser. So you're all familiar with Sennheiser, the, the uh, headphones and, and microphones. Sennheiser is a customer of Sugar Serum. They use Oracle JD Edwards in the back office, and they needed to connect JD Edwards to Sugar CRM. And Magic Software is one of the uh, leaders in the marketplace in maintaining all of the different integration protocols necessary for JD Edwards and they have become uh, a leader for Sugar CRM. And they also support SAP, as well as all the other Oracle Suite, uh, Microsoft, um, and a whole uh, uh, Infor, a whole slew of, of, of a variety of different ones. And so I would recommend uh, Magic Software. 
Uh, but I would also state that there's a lot of different choices out there. And so um, you'll find a lot of answers for this particular topic. And, and ultimately, if, if you're not an integration technology expert, this is a key reason why you're going to work with IntelliStream, because they are themselves an integration technology expert, and they'll help you solve all these problems uh, um, in a very efficient and, and uh, cost-efficient way. Right. So excellent. Thank you so much for that uh, that, that that answer, Clint. Um, so lots of uh, options with iPaaS vendors. Um, Magic Software is obviously one of them, but but many options out in the marketplace that uh, that support Sugar and offer prepackaged integrations for Sugar. Um, so with that, I want to thank everybody for taking the time. We're right at the top of the hour. Um, thank you very much, Ross, for joining us, and that uh, that awesome uh, story uh, for Air Motive. Very welcome. And, uh, of course, uh, thank you, Clint, for joining us and giving uh, sort of shedding light on some of the, the really key and interesting, compelling trends in the manufacturing industry uh, at, at the high, at the, uh, say, 50,000-foot view. Appreciate that. You bet. And, and I would uh, encourage anybody who wanted to learn more about the topic to follow the Sugar Serum blog at sugarserum.com slash blog. You'll see a whole set of articles from us around how manufacturers like you are, are leveraging Sugar CRM to grow their business.